Hello. Hi, teacher. How are you today? Hi. You sound very far away. Here. Can you, you hear? Can? Me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay. How was your day? This was really nice. <laughs> I get a new. I get a new activities uh, for my office. My own office. What do you mean by activities? Uh, another job. <laughs> oh, a new, a new customers, a new customers for for my own office. Yes, I understand. So you've got new clients. Yes. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. That means more work, more money, <laughs> more challenges. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> yes, and you, Carla, why are you so happy? You're dancing. I'm happy because I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> I already ate tonight. Oh, that's good. Make me happy. <laughs> I ate a uh, watermelon. <laughs> hey. Really? We're low maintenance, right? We don't need a lot to be happy. No, no, no. Just a watermelon and then you're like, Just yeah. a watermelon <laughs> or a Coke or a... That's good. Yeah, sometimes when I've been like starving and I eat, I get really happy too. I'm like, yay. <laughs> Finally. Marvin, welcome. Carlos, hi. Hey, welcome everyone. We're going to see you in Veronica. Hi, Josue. Hi. Hey, hi. They're welcoming you, Thank too. You Guys, uh, tonight, with some some part of the class, we have to start working on the midterm, okay? Even if we don't finish section three tonight, we have to do the midterm during the weekend, all right? So I just wanted to, to inform you that. Okay. Teacher, are we going to have classes tomorrow? No, we don't have classes, no. But you have to work on the midterm during the weekend, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's begin because maybe we can finish this uh, section. I don't know, not sure. I didn't want to rush it, but yeah. And uh, can you read the objective, please, Beatrice? By the end of this class, you will learn how to make requests with modal if clauses and germs. Yes. Thank you. I don't know if this is a video we watched last night. Oh, it sounds like he... yes, it's the same. So we don't need this. Okay, well, let's do the activity. We're going to skip it. All right, we have to be mindful of the conjugation. So you want to use your roommate's computer and you use the expression, is it okay? So how can we say this, guys? Based on what we learned last night. No. Oh, look. <laughs> okay. the answer if will be okay if, if I use your computer. Uh-huh. Very good. Is it okay if I use your computer? This, you have a question mark. In some of the expressions, you don't use a question mark, right? But this is a question. It says, is it? Okay, number two. Again, <laughs> Carla. That's the one I didn't answer yet. Uh, mm -hmm. hmm. Would you mind if Friday. you give me a ride? <laughs> giving me. Mm. Giving me a ride. Giving my word? Me. Yes. Would you mind giving? Yeah, because Carla, you cannot say would you mind and would you mind if you you cannot say that because you're asking for permission yes it's like even in spanish you cannot say te molestaría si me subo al auto al carro and if you're asking permission for you for yourself you cannot say te molestaría ti subirte you don't say that so you're, this would you mind if you have to ask for permission for you or for someone else, but not to the person directly? So this is not possible, right? 
can say, would you mind it if I, would you mind it if she or he, but not to a person, okay? That's an exception, let's say. Okay. So we're gonna say, would you mind giving me a right to work? Number three, Marvin. Okay. Could you help me to move? Mm -hmm. Help me to move on Saturday. Could you tell me? To move? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Let's see next. Veronica. If your mind uh, gave you a second piece of pie, help me up. A uh, second piece of pie. You would like your aunt to give you a second piece of pie. I was wondering if you'd mind, after mind, you need germ. If I. Giving. Giving I me. was wondering if you'd mind giving, giving mm -hmm. me a second piece of pie. Yes, that would be me. Would you mind giving me a second piece of pie, please? So. <laughs> That should be right. Me too. <laughs> okay, so everything is right. This is infinitive, infinitive, adjourned, and adjourned. Okay. So, have you completed this part, guys? Section 3.4? Yes. Yeah. No yet, teacher. <laughs> no yet, teacher. Right. Yes. yes. Well, I hope you get the right answers anyway. Yeah. Let's see next. 3.5. Yeah, I think we're going to finish this section. And can you read the objective, please? Gio? Okay. Uh, by the end of this class, you will develop skills and listening for specific information. Listen to requests. Listen to telephone conversations. And you will develop. 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 Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, listening favors. What? All right. Anyway, you might have answers to, well, questions to answer at the end. I would like you to take notes, please, just in case. All right. Let's watch. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you will develop skills in listening for specific information. After listening to the audio program, you will complete a quiz in order to check your understanding. So let's get started. You'll listen to three requests. Your task is to write down what each caller requests and identify whether the person agrees or disagrees to the request. Hello? Hi, Robert. This is Tina. Hi, Tina. What's up? Well, actually, would you mind lending me your camera for a few days? I want to take some photos of my new apartment to send to my folks. No problem. You can borrow it. Oh, thanks a million. So did the person agree to borrow to lend his camera? I think it was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. write it down, right? Tina, yes. Okay, and so on. Hello? Hi, Maggie. This is Kyle. Oh, hi. How are things with you? Pretty good. Listen, I was wondering if I could borrow your bread maker. My bread maker? Don't tell me you are going to bake. I know. I'm planning to cook dinner for my girlfriend this weekend, and I want to bake bread. And I want it to be perfect. I remember you baked some amazing bread with that thing. So, what do you say? Can I borrow it? I'll be careful. Well, I have bad news. It's broken. I've been meaning to get it fixed, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Oh, too bad. But you know, you can always just bake bread on your own. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'll just go to a bakery. Hello? Hi, Li Ling. It's Phil. Hi, Phil. What's up? Not much, but I was wondering if I could ask you for a favor. Maybe. Try me. Well, I have to go out of town for a few days next week. Uh-huh. Could I leave Polly with you while I'm gone? Polly? Who's Polly? You know, 
Polly, my bird? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Your bird. I don't know, Phil. I really don't like birds very much. They're messy and they make a lot of noise and... No, not Polly. She's really a great bird. She's really clean and very quiet. She won't bother you, I promise. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I'll bring her over on Tuesday night. Okay, but you owe me one. Definitely didn't want to do anything. <laughs> okay, so the, let's see if the questions are here. Okay, what does Tina want to borrow from Robert? A camera. A camera. camera. Very good. Number two, what does Kyle want to borrow from Maggie? A bread, a bread maker. Bread maker. Bread maker. Bread maker. What's a bread maker anyway? Hmm. I imagine like what? like a waffleta. No, I don't know. Let me see. We have to see this, guys. <laughs> we have to know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Ah, something like this. Look. Okay. I had never seen this. <laughs> Nobody has a bread maker, do you? Nope. No. 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 I'm always new. <laughs> Never. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, what kind of favor does Phil want? Phil wants take care of his bird. to take care of his bird while he's away. Of his bird while he's away. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Very good. Good job. That was easy. Okay, uh, can you read the objective, please, Veronica? Uh, by the end of the class, you will learn in the next report. Weekend. And uh, I. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get the microphones because we can hear the video already. All right. So let's watch how to make indirect questions. This is very long, guys. So take notes on, on statements, imperatives, yes, no questions, and WH questions. Okay. We have to watch the full video, so let's do that. But when we finish the video, I will explain it one by one, so don't worry about it. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. We will focus on turning statements into indirect requests. Now, let's discuss what indirect requests are. So, indirect requests means that you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there. Um, and you leave a message for that person. Well, this is what we call an indirect request. So let me present some structure. If you see the chart on the screen, we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So if we have statements, imperatives, yes and no questions, and WH questions, those will be different whenever we change them to indirect request. Uh, now, I'll be discussing this individually. Uh, and then um, we're going to try to make sense of all of them together. The idea is to be able to make, uh, to, to take any kind of um, sentence and then change that to a form of indirect request. So in this particular lesson, we're going to focus with the first one, with statements. So as we can see, um, statements are quite easy to change, right? We have a statement there. Jeff. Tony's having a party. So that statement, we change it to an in indirect request. You call um, maybe uh, maybe Jeff, uh, Jeff's uh, assistant, uh, and uh, you want to give a message to him because he was not available. And then you, you, um, you tell um, the assistant, uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? All right. So it's quite easy, right? We just kind of like introduce, could you tell? And here we're going to introduce uh, the person who uh, that message is for. So remember that what you're doing is you're leaving a message with Jeff's assistant. Uh, and then Jeff's assistant will doing, 
will then give that message to him. So it's quite simple, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, leave um, quite a few messages for Jeff. Uh, and then we want to practice changing those statements into indirect requests. In this case, we're going to practice uh, changing those uh, statements to indirect requests introduced by uh, that. So the first one that we can see there is, okay, Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party. That's the message. Uh, so how would I give the message to the receptionist or to his assistant? Um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? By the way, the reason you see that in parentheses is because that is optional. That means that you can either say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Or you could just include it. You could say, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? So let's write a couple of other um, uh, statements, if you will. All right, and these are messages that I want to give uh, to uh, Jeff's uh, receptionist, right? Uh, let me, I'll change the size a little bit so that you can see that pretty clear. So how do we change this next statement? Jeff, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. All right, so once again, we want to deliver the message. We want to leave the message with the receptionist. So um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work. So basically the only thing that we did um, is if you see this is the message, right? And what we did is we just pretty much sort of like have the same thing. We only added and I'm going to highlight that in red. We only added, could you tell Jeff that, right? Because the message is for Jeff, once again, right? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? Now, highlight that in yellow so you can see. So this was the only thing that we added. And we're going to do the same thing for other kind of statements. Uh, and so let's play around with other kinds of statements real quick. Um, let's see, something related to party, right? And we want to give the message to Jeff. All right. Um, okay. Um, so let me change the size a little bit. So Jeff, Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party. So how can we change this to an indirect request or an indirect message? Well, first of all, I mentioned that um, at this point, because everything is directed towards uh, Jeff, uh, we want to say, could you tell Jeff that? And we're simply going to copy this, as you can see. Right. And by the way, uh, something that I forgot to do was I just forgot to add this question mark here. Right. Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's quite simple, as you can see, right? Uh, let's do one more. Um, what's the message? Well, I want to also give another message to Jeff, and this message is going to be... All right, um, Tony is going to have a DJ who is going to play all kinds of music, right? So once again, what is it that we want to do? Well, uh, quite simple. We're going to just borrow this. Could you tell Jeff that? All right. And we're simply going to just, uh, the, the message, we don't change much on the message at this point, right? It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to have a DJ who's going to play all kinds of music, right? That's the message that I want to give to, uh, to Jeff. Let's see what we have. See how this structure changes. So this is a structure, guys. I would like you to take a screenshot of it. You're going to use it to transform the examples I'm going to give you right now. OK. Do you have questions about this? Yes. Yes. 
Uh, okay. Um, when, when you, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, teacher, uh, the, that is when you use that, you don't use comma, but if you don't use that, you, you can use the comma. When you say, could you tell Jeff, comma, Tony's having a party. No, there's no comma. No the, comma. All they're saying is that that is optional in this case. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You can say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party or could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? Okay. It means it's optional. Okay, but I want you to look at something, guys, in the questions and in the statements, not in the imperative form. That's the only exception. But if you notice, we basically have a, a statement here, right? A statement is formed by subject and predicate, right? So we have to break out, you know that. So that is a statement. That is how you make one. It's subject plus predicate. Or usually, not always, right? You have subject plus the verb. Most of the cases. So that is the, the, the end of it. Look here, we're saying Tony is having a party. It's not a question. It's a statement, right? I am going to the beach. Tony is having a party. It's a question. It's a statement in the affirmative form, okay? This here is she's free on Friday. It's a statement. Can you see that? She is free on Friday. So yes. you don't invert the questions. You don't use auxiliaries, nothing. You just say something. Okay, and here it says the party starts, subject verb. I should pick her up. All right, so we have to forget about the question form and start making affirmative and negative sentences. That's it. Okay, that's a tip. Now, the only exception is with the, um, with the imperative because this don't turns into not to. Okay, and that's it. This is the only exception if you notice. Does that make sense? I'm gonna give you an example maybe. Look, so you're gonna use, this is gonna be the expression, hold on. I'm gonna use expression, expression plus affirmative or negative sentence, okay? So guys, give me a sentence in the present simple, very basic, present simple. Give me an example. Oh, oh, I'm missing something. If it's yes, no question, you're gonna use if or whether, okay? And if it's a WH question, you're gonna use a WH word. So it's gonna be like this. This is the general structure for indirect questions. Okay, you can see in the video, you have a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of ways of doing it, but I will give you this one because it's general for everything, okay? So, I need a sentence in the present simple form. Can you give me an example? Present simple, guys, simple. <laughs> I just need a sentence like she, uh-huh. She what? Present simple. She go to the mall. But that would be incorrect. There's a mistake here. She goes. Ah, she goes. Goes is the pronunciation. All right, she goes to the mall. This is a sentence. And that is okay. That's what we're gonna use. Okay. Now give me a sentence in the in the future form with going to. She's going gonna to the mall. <laughs> She's going to go to the mall. All right, very good. Okay, now one sentence in the present simple form with the verb be. For example, the class is at 8 p.m. Okay, this is present, very basic, right? <laughs> okay, so now we have to use one of the expressions. Let's see the expressions here we have. Could you tell, can you tell, can you ask, could you ask, can you ask, could you ask? 
All right, so ask, we're gonna use ask if it's a question, right? And tell if it's not a question, all right? And then we have two forms of saying this. Could you ask if she will go in, she will go to the mall? And if we can say could or can, all right? Ask for questions, tell for is for statements. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna use one expression. For this one, what can I say? Can you tell or can you ask? Can you tell? Can you ask? Okay, let's say, can you ask? Can you ask? Yes. Uh, is this a yes, no question or a WH question? It could be both. I mean, it, this is not even a question. Let's ask her when, okay? Can you ask when? She's going to the mall. No, this one, ah. the same. Uh -huh. Now this is the statement that I need. Can you ask when she goes to the mall? Okay, same thing here. She is going to the mall on on Friday. Okay. But we're gonna give a message this time. We're gonna say, your mom is going to the mall on Friday. Okay, so this is gonna be a message. What are we gonna say? Can you ask or can you tell? If it's a question, we're gonna say ask. If it's a message, we're gonna say tell. So this is gonna be a message, okay? Yeah. So what are we gonna say? Uh, can you tell Laura? Can you tell the mom? Could you tell? Um, now I need somebody. That's the thing. Yeah. Can you tell your mom? Lisa. Can you, could tell, you tell Lisa? Alvin. Alvin. Uh huh. His mom is going to the mall on Friday. Okay. So the message, you don't touch it, okay? It stays the same. Okay, now the only difference is, if you want to guys, write this down. So this is the, the general structure, the expression, if or what, or WH and the sentence, okay? And then if it is imperative, if I say, hey guys, let me see, be on time for the test. We don't have a test. Don't worry, be on time for the test. Okay. I would say, the, the teacher said to be on time for the test. So this is the, the change you have to make. You have to use to, and if it's negative, and if I say don't, don't be late, you say not to be, not to be late, okay? So that is the only change you make. You transform don't into not to. And if it's affirmative, you put to, okay? Anyway, I think you're gonna get this with practice, guys, because, um, or follow the structure, either or. So I'm gonna give you some messages. I will give them to you in order so you don't get confused. A similar one, and I would like you to transform it into the indirect request, okay? So the first one will be, I will give it in the same order, so just follow the example and substitute it, all right? The first one will be, uh, we, this is the first message, guys. We don't have classes tomorrow. That's real, okay? That's a statement. Imperative would be, um, don't be late on Monday. All right, it's gonna be the message. And all of those are my messages to you. Okay, yes, no question is, hey, for example, hey guys, do you work on, do you work on Saturdays? That's my question. And, Another one, WH question, I'm gonna say, what time do you finish work on Fridays? That is my question, WH question, yes, no question, imperative and statement in order. So I need you to transform them following the example, is that clear? 
we're gonna work in pairs. If you need help, send a message and I'll go to your room, okay? In case it's too difficult, but I don't think so. Follow the example. All right, ready? Okay. All right, let's do it. Uh, okay, accept the invitation, please. I'll send you this on the WhatsApp group. Okay. Do you understand? Mm, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, it's difficult. It's difficult, yeah. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah. I have, oh. uh, have to do. For example, uh, can you tell, can you? No, the sentences that, that she has sent to the- Yeah, I, I know the, the sentence that the, the teacher uh, sent, but it, like the examples la, with the video, like the, yeah. could you tell Jeff? Could you tell, uh -huh. could you ask? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Can you ask? Okay. How we classes tomorrow? Mm, Maybe. No, no. The form no. is. Look at the look at the picture. I sent the pictures, right? So we, um, follow the. Uh, I I I understand. We have to to make. With this sentence, uh, imperative move, just no question. Uh, every every sentence is that uh, what what you uh, asked to us? Uh, no, hold on, I'm gonna send you this again. No, you cool. have to use you have to transform from. I, I'm giving you an example like this one. You have to transform it to this this mode. Okay. To the second Still. one. Can you can see the image. F Okay, the first one is uh, uh, about the, the classes tomorrow. That is a statement. Yes, exactly. They're in order. They're one by one per category. Okay. Uh -huh, just substitute it. We have to, to make sentence in, in every in every mood. Oh, okay. So I already gave you the question or the the example. I gave you the the, the first column, you have to transform it into the second one. You see, it says, Jeff, Tony is having a party. And you have to say, could you tell the students that la, 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 la. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I mm -hmm. said, this is the message from me to the students. So then you're going to say, can you tell the students la, 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 la. That's what you have to write. Or can you ask? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to to use this. Right? Do you work inside uh -huh. the no? <laughs> sure. The, the, this so Laura, we don't the, have class. The, yeah, the, this is this good. Question as, as, uh, is asking to me, right? Do you work on Saturdays? No, I don't. It's just like, I can, how can I make the question? Can you ask me if I work? <laughs> no, can you ask Carla? Can you if ask the work? students? It doesn't matter. It depends. Uh, oh, okay. In that we, case, in that uh -huh. case, if you, Gio, have a question, yeah. you have the question. Yeah. 
Hey, yeah, and you say, Car you tell Carla, hey, Carla, could you ask the teacher if we have classes tomorrow? Ah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. it's so like it doesn't a, matter. Yeah, co workers or. Uh huh, exactly. Like mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, and he, and do you, you work on Saturdays? And you ask Laura, Laura is there. Can you ask Laura? Teacher, could you hear the Beatrice? No. Hi, Beatrice. No, we don't. I don't know what happened with the audio, but you can hear me? Can you hear us, Beatrice? No, I remember she had problems at the beginning. So you haven't done anything? Not yet? Yeah, only the, the first... Um, Yes, I'm trying to do the, the, the sentence. For example, is in, in the number, do you work on Saturday? And if I, could you ask Yesenia if she worked on Saturday, for example? Okay, good. I'm gonna send you Hi. a friend. Ah, okay, here you are. Hi. <laughs> Great. Hi. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. um, maybe if there is a yes or no question, question right? Mm -hmm. um, the example say, um, for example, in the statement, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a question, right? It's a question like, uh, do you work on Saturday, right? And then under a request, maybe it's, could you ask? Uh, Alexander, could to, you to ask? Or Marvin, yes. Uh -huh. If he work on, if he work on Saturdays, and you can say yes or no, because it's a yes or no question. Yes, I work on Saturday or not, I work on Saturday. All the sentences are, can you ask or call you? How was it? Difficult? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. What, is, what is the first one? The message is, it's the message from me to you guys, supposedly, but you can use anything, all right? So the message is, we don't have classes tomorrow. What did you write? Can you tell the, the can you tell the, can you tell the class not have classes tomorrow? Uh -huh, no, but don't change it because we're only gonna change it in the imperative form. So can you okay. tell the class? That don't have, don't have. We don't have classes. Have we don't have classes to. It's exactly the same message. Okay. okay. Next. Would you tell to students? Mm -hmm. Don't uh, we don't have Say classes again, tomorrow? Alvin? Would you tell to the to the students? Ah, don't use to tell Marvin. Student. Tell Alvin. Tell student. the students. Would you, would you tell students we don't have classes tomorrow? Yes. Tell me why. You say you don't say tell to me why, right? That's not the song. <laughs> it's tell, tell me. me why. Tell the students. <laughs> All right. Very good. Next message is don't be late for class. Challenging. Can you tell can you tell to Alvin don't be late on Can you tell Alvin? <laughs> not, not to be late. Not, not to be, not to be, be late. late. Yes, not because it's imperative. Late. Not to. It's a coincidence, Alvin. It's <laughs> only you. an Thank example. You Thank you, guys. It's only an example. <laughs> can you tell can you tell Alvin not to be late? <laughs> yeah, that's the message. Very good. Complete. Oh, that was not the message I gave you. I'm reading something else. Hold on. What message? I asked you a question, right? And it was Do you work on Saturdays? Okay, what is it? Could you tell me, 
that you work on Saturday? No. But this is a yes, no question. So we're going to use if or whether. Could you yes. tell me if? Uh, can, you, can, can you tell me if you work on Saturday? You work on Saturday? You work on Saturday. Yes. Very good. And the last question is, what time do you finish work on Fridays? Can you ask her what time we finish work on Fridays? Yes, that's good. That works. Very good. Not bad. Actually, not at all. All right, look, guys, we haven't finished this topic. It's only the beginning. <laughs> no, but it, there's something else. We have three more videos explaining one by one. So that would have made your life easier, I know. And also, after the video, I will have you practice next class. After statements, practice, okay? Imperative, practice. Questions, practice. We're going to do that next week. But right now, I need you to focus on the midterm because I... Uh, you have to do this midterm tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday, tops. That's the limit, okay? So you're gonna go finish all section three and then you will find the midterm here, all right? Um, I have a suggestion for you guys. Sometimes this, sometimes you see the midterm in class, right? Do you ever do that? That you finish yeah. in class? Okay, I cannot do that anymore because it's now prohibited, let's say, but if you have problems, if there is a complicated question because of the platform, you can write it down for Monday and I will give you the answers on Monday, okay? But we cannot do the test together anymore. You have to wow. do it on your own by yourself. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's something you have to do. Um, anyway, you go to the listening, yeah, right? This is easy because it's multiple choice. Okay, I, I'm just gonna go over it because I have to, all right. Next, we have this, so multiple choice. There shouldn't be any problems, right? Okay, let's see what else. Letter C, this might be a problem. Mine forgets when, okay, but you simply have to put the words in order, so it shouldn't be a problem. This is one word saying when and if. In case you need the answers, what you can do is take a picture, all right, and send it to the group. Somebody can help you or I can send you the answer too. Usually you have the same problems, so send it to the group so that we have the same answer, okay? So um, this has to be completed by when, guys? Um. Monday. <laughs> By Sunday. Saturday. <laughs> Sunday, actually. Sunday. Yes. Sunday, Sunday at night. <laughs> Sunday midnight. All right, so you have letter D, E. The majority are multiple choice. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> wow. Okay. 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 Sorry, sorry. It was my cell phone, sorry. Okay. Wow. It's a, it's a romantic music. Once we open card, tomorrow will be Friday, right? Tomorrow will be Friday. So the reading. I announced that. The majority are multiple choice, so it should take you, I don't know, some minutes. Not a lot. Okay, well, let's go back. Let's watch the next part of it. How to form statements. How to make requests using statements, okay? Let me go back. Guys, please, 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 I beg you, please take notes so that you start getting used to the, the change, right? From the direct one to the indirect one. All right, let's watch. Mm -hmm, here it is. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll learn how to make indirect requests. We will focus on turning statements into indirect requests. Now let's discuss what indirect requests are. So indirect requests means that you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not. Is this the same video? No, right? No. Oh, okay. Not available. Let's for example, you call a person, the person is not there. Um, and you leave.
leave a message for that person? Well, this is what we call an indirect request. So let me present some structure. If you see the chart on the screen, we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So if we have statements, imperatives, yes no questions, and WH questions, those will be different whenever we change them to indirect requests. Uh, now I'll be discussing this individually. Uh, and then um, we're going to try to make sense of all of them together. The idea is to be able to make, uh, to, to take any kind of um, sentence and then change that to a form of indirect request. So in this particular lesson, we're going to focus with the first one, with statements. So as we can see, um, statements are quite easy to change, right? We have a statement there, Jeff, Tony's having a party. So that statement, we change it to an in indirect request. You call, um, maybe uh, maybe Jeff, uh, Jeff the assistant, uh, and uh, you want to give a message to him because he was not available. And then you you um, you tell um, the assistant, uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? All right. So it's quite easy, right? We just kind of like introduce, could you tell? And here we're going to introduce uh, the person who uh, that message is for. So remember that what you're doing is you're leaving a message with Jeff's assistant. Uh, and then Jeff's assistant will, do, will then give that message to him. So it's quite simple, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, leave um, quite a few messages for Jeff. Uh, and then we want to practice changing those statements into indirect requests. In this case, we're going to practice uh, changing those uh, statements to indirect requests introduced by uh, that. So the first one that we can see there is, okay, Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party. That's the message. Uh, so how would I give the message to the receptionist or to his assistant? Um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? By the way, the reason you see that in parentheses is because that is optional. That means that you can either say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Or you could just include it. You could say, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? So let's write a couple of other um, uh, statements, if you will. All right, And these are messages that I want to give uh, to uh, Jeff's uh, receptionist, right? Uh, let me, I'll change the size a little bit so that you can see that pretty clear. So how do we change this next statement? Jeff, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. All right, so once again, we want to deliver the message. We want to leave the message with the receptionist. So um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work. So basically the only thing that we did um, is if you see this is the message, right? And what we did is we just pretty much sort of like have the same thing. We only added, and I'm going to highlight that in red, we only added, could you tell Jeff that, right? Because that, the message is for Jeff once again, right? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? Now highlight that in yellow so you can see. So this was the only thing that we added. And we're going to do the same thing for other kind of statements. Uh, and so let's play around with other kinds of statements real quick. Um, let's see, something related to a party, right? And we want to give the message to Jeff. All right. Um, OK, um, so let me change the size a little bit. So Jeff, Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party. So how can we change this to an indirect request or an indirect message? Well, first of all, I mentioned that um, at this point, because everything is directed towards uh, Jeff, uh, we want to say, could you tell Jeff that? And we're simply going to copy this, as you can see. right? And by the way, uh, something that I forgot to do was I just forgot to add this question mark here, right? Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's quite simple as you can see, right? Uh, let's do one more. 
Um, what's the message? Well, I want to also give another message to Jeff, and this message is going to be... All right, um, Tony is going to have a DJ who is going to play all kinds of music, right? So once again, what is it that we want to do? Well, uh, quite simple. We're going to just borrow this. Could you tell Jeff that? All right. And we're simply going to just uh, the, the message. We don't change much on the message at this point, right? It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to have a DJ who is going to play all kinds of music, right? That's the message that I want to give to, uh, to Jeff. Okay, is it clear this time? Better, at least? I think it's better, teacher. Better, right? Okay. So this is how to form um, the... Um, hold on, give me one second. How to form indirect questions with statements. Okay. I'll give you an exercise and this will help you practice, all right? So the only expression that you have to use here is, can you tell me? Okay, not can you tell Alvin, all right? Not can you tell the students, not can you tell me? That is the expression, okay? And then you have to change, but this, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not this one yet. We have to watch the next video for that. Hmm, okay, let me see. After the second video, we're gonna do this exercise, all right? And I'll send it to you. So I guess that will be tomorrow. Do you have questions about the midterm, by the way? No. No, right? No. You're used to it? Okay. Let me see. Indirect requests. Mm, okay. So I guess on Monday, we're going to finish this topic, guys, because we can only watch this video. But please take notes. This is only yes, no questions. All right. Let's watch. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests indirect request when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or let's say for example you call a person and the person is not there but you leave a message this is what we call an indirect request today we're going to focus on turning yes or no questions into indirect requests and we're going to use if or whether so we're going to ask a question indirect for example could you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Or another way could be, could you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Or another way could be, could you ask Sophia whether she's free on Friday? So let me quickly present some structure. As you can see on the chart, you can see how we turn yes or no questions into indirect requests. So the example that I had given earlier was, Sophia, are you free on Friday? And we turned that into an indirect request by saying, can you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Another way that we can possibly do this is by saying, could you ask Sophia whether she's free on Friday? And then a third way that we can actually do it is by saying, could you ask Sophia whether or not she's free on Friday? So all of those three ways are just different forms on how we can ask the same thing. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to write a couple of questions and then we're going to practice turning those questions into indirect so let me just uh, uh, write the question here and then we will uh, turn that into an indirect request. All right, there we go. So uh, let's say, for example, we have the first one. Do you ha uh, Jennifer, do you have a date for the party? So how are we going to change this? Well, first of all, we can either ask with can or could. So we won't be polite. So we want to say could you, right? Could you? And then, in this case, we're going to change the verb to ask. Could you ask Jennifer if she has a date for the party? And so what we did was we added could you, 
and then we uh, that follows the verb ask, and then that follows um, the object Jennifer, and that follows if. All right. Could you ask Jennifer if? And here is the message that we want to give if she has a date for the party. Notice that we don't include the auxiliary verb in this kind of question. So that will be one way to put it. Another way could be, could you ask Jennifer whether she has a date for the party. That could be another way to do it. And finally, one uh, last way that we want to learn as well is, could you ask Jennifer whether or not she has a date for the party? Okay. So on the first one, we use if. On the second one, we use just the word uh, whether. And then we use whether or not. And then uh, the message uh, did not change. So I'm going to go ahead and color that in green just so that you can see that it did not change. Go. Okay, excellent. Notice that in this case, we are no longer given a message but asking a question instead. And so, therefore, the verb that we uh, use is no longer tell, but uh, we use the verb ask. So, what I'd like for you to do next, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, write a couple of more questions here. And this time, I would like for you to try them out and see if you can turn those questions into, in the, I'll put it in the three forms that we just um, did at this time. So, let me just change the size on there so you can put these. All right. We will do this exercise next class. Do you have any questions? Not indirect questions, just questions. <laughs> any? Uh, not really. No? Not really. Okay, well, we'll finish this on Monday. Please finish the midterm. I will write it by Sunday, okay? If you have any problems, send your questions to the group or send them to um, the one who's going to help you. There is a, a phone number that always tells you I can help you with if you have any questions. If you don't get any answers, you can message them or message me, okay? So we have three okay. ways of solving it. All right, thank you very much, guys. It was nice seeing you. I hope you have thank a beautiful you. night. Thank you. And a great thank weekend. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. See you on Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.